Okay, so I'm returning to this project, compositing our creature. Uh, let's look at what I have. I haven't looked at this since Wednesday, so I've organized the body into these three folders. All the head assets are together in one folder. There's still separate layers, and I have quite a few layers making that head. And then all the body assets are in this folder together, which makes them easy to turn on and off to isolate. And then all the leg assets are in this folder together. Now the reason to group them into those folders is simply so that I can move them around uh, all together or scale them or transform them all together. So for instance, I can take the head and the body, just hold down shift and select both those groups, use the move tool, and if I do auto select by group, not by layer, I can move those both right onto the legs. Not only that, I can transform them and kind of pivot them onto the legs. Not only that, I can also do scale adjustments, right? And I can even do things like distort, just slightly tug, and this will help with the perspective to kind of show that the, the head is more in front than the body. So we're always looking for ways to kind of improve the proportions improve the overall illusion of a real creature. And that's without sacrificing the individual layer components, you know, that make up each aspect of my creature. So I could go and work on those individually. All right, let's see. Um, clearly, the legs need to be cleaned up, right? But I don't really need my sketch so much anymore. And I don't really need so much background space. So remember, I know some of us have had illustration problems, or not illustration problems, resolution problems, which can always happen. But you want your finished piece to fit comfortably within kind of a presentation space. Think of this as this black space around your image as the mat that you would frame your print. You want this to be roughly 11 by 14 by 350. So right now I'm above that, which is good because I'm gonna crop down some more. And make sure you're at 350, not at 72, not at some lower resolution uh, because you want all of these elements to be really crisp. And that allows you, if you needed to, to be able to move that creature into your landscape and it could fill the entire landscape at full resolution. So it, it gives you the most uh, control, the most variety. Now looking at it, I can also think, does it need anything? And I think it does need something. So I'm gonna go and think about the tail again and think about how can I just add a simple tail that will give it a little bit more visual interest, especially in its overall shape, because shape is everything, right? That's what we've seen from the Pokemon. This outside shape is really gonna give us our definition. So the tail, again, I'm gonna to try to only use mushrooms. I'm gonna bring this one in. So this is just a review. And this is a cute little floating mushroom. I'm not gonna grow it any, I'm just gonna steal it and see what I can make of it. Duplicate it from the smart object, delete the duplicate, move it down below the groups. Right. And then if I do auto select by group, it will still select the layer if I need to. And I need it to kind of come off of the spine. So this is the important role that the sketch still has. You have to see where your spine is. So my spine has kind of moved up. And there's definitely gonna be changes to your creature, but you see how my spine is now moving along this shell right there. So I want it to kind of line up with the perceived shell underneath these extra plates, right? And so I might move this a little bit in more. And that feels like the kind of line of the, the tail I want. So I do all of that before I clean it up because it shows me what actual overlaps need to happen. And then the most basic adjustments before I do too much of anything else 
are just levels and color balance. So I'm going to play with the midtones and levels. Because it's behind, I'm going to probably darken it, darken the midtones a little bit. Maybe even limit the highlights just a tiny bit. Actually, it's catching a lot of light there, so maybe I'll leave those at full. Okay, now how do I select around it? Well, Mushroom is a nice sharp resolution, so it's a good one to, where the background is kind of a blurred focus. So I could try the quick selection tool and kind of paint, but it's being a little over broad. Thank you, thank you. And so now I'm going to show you another selection tool. Instead of trying to lasso it out, or instead of trying to use the magic wand tool, which works okay, right? But there's going to be lots of additions. Um, I am going to use what's called the magnetic lasso tool. So it's under the regular lasso tool, it's at the bottom. And what the magnetic lasso tool does is it tries to kind of auto correct for you. So, especially if I use my tablet and I start selecting around. it will find the guide for me. So it kind of um, does a little exploratory line first and uses an algorithm within Photoshop to find the edge that's sharp. And on things that aren't super complicated like blades of grass or something, even if I wobble a little bit, it's going to keep me from cutting into my mushroom or including some of the background that I don't want. So once I make it all the way around, you can see that gives me a really clean edge, though it might leave some things out, like the very tip of this mushroom that got a little soft. So remember that any selection tool you use, magic wand, quick selection, lasso, magnetic lasso, those are the four we've looked at so far. You can always add to them or subtract. So I'm going to say shift, and that will add to my current selection. So I'll go in with the regular lasso by hand and add that in. Right? I also have it feathering at three pixels, so I can change that to don't feather at all, and then add in and get a little bit of a sharper edge if I want certain details that seem to be lacking. Okay, so now, whoops, <laughs> if I hit delete, it just deletes the mushroom, right? So how do I delete everything except the mushroom? I have to go to select and invert the selection. So select inverse, and now I can delete all of that background. That's the same technique I will use for the legs, cleaning those up. But first, am I happy with that overall shape? And this is what I like to do to check. I'm going to unlock the background and I'm going to fill it. So edit fill with 50% gray and turn off my sketch and just kind of look, do I like this overall shape? If I squint, these are still like really, really strong focal points. So I might have to adjust that color and knock those down a little bit. But is the shape kind of seeming like something that can move and have dimension? And for the most part, yes. I think what I need is a little bit more dodging and burning where the legs come out of the, I guess, the shell, for lack of a better term. So it feels like it, it could bend more. I don't have much of a waist on this creature yet. And my sketch shows me that I, that I want that. I need some sort of separation you know, between the hips and the rib cage, so I have that flexibility. All right. Oh, it's, it's funny. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I just kind of hid my head, but it makes it look like he just turned his back on me. Yeah, <laughs> like he's mooning me. Okay. So maybe I need just a little bit of a new shape, something that's a little bit more interesting and, and a different texture than what I have because everything's very round and very clunky. So I'm going to bring in this type of mushroom. And this is a beautiful little 
little mushroom fungus that kind of looks like sea coral. And I didn't didn't use it earlier because it's a hard one to cut out, but I know a lot of you are using some things that are hard to cut out. And there's nothing wrong with that. We shouldn't be detoured. But now let's use all that we've learned about selection to make the best cutout we can. So instead of trying the magic wand and trying to select out with contiguous turned on, for instance, all of these different greens, holding down shift and adding all of these different background elements, clearly that would take forever, right? And you'd still have little debris. And so what's the other extreme? Well, the other extreme is just to use the lasso tool and very carefully with a feather of maybe just two pixels this time, just to soften it slightly. Go in and individually cut, cut out the, the shape, but there's so much of it, that seems like a pain. So what's the other one? Well, I can try quick selection. This might have an advantage because there's such a difference in the color, right? between the green and the orange. And quick selection works pretty well there. You pick kind of a brush size, you let it kind of guess the edge you want. It's gonna miss some things. So that might work pretty well. But then when it gets a little bit harder, yeah, this actually, this is a, a tool that's working out. So I want you to experiment with these different selection tools so that you can problem solve and use them as efficiently as possible. I also have what are called undercuts here. Things that need to be um, cut through. <laughs> so it's not just a solid object that I'm cutting the background around. but it's also these little windows that I need to cut out because I want the other textures of my creatures to come through. Now the problem with the quick selection tool is when you're just a little too rushed, right? And it will get you things you don't want. So up here, I'm going to try that magnetic lasso. And you can see how it's it's kind of sending out the arc ahead of me. Yeah. But once it's put down kind of an anchor point, this is almost using a vector selection. Once it puts down the anchor point and then sets the curve, I can't go back and change it. I just have to use a different selection tool to add to it. but I can move a little bit faster and be a little less uh, concerned as I would be if I were just using the lasso tool freehand. Come on. So no single selection tool is, is always the answer. You have to kind of problem solve based on the reference you're using. And I like to do it in chunks. So good use of Photoshop is very often just good selecting. And with that two pixel feather, that also helps me. Now if I'm doing something with a, that's a really soft texture like fur or feathers, I would go beyond the two pixel feather and I would probably either make it a higher uh, feather count, or I would just use the refine and mask or the select and mask option to bite away at the selection before I delete. But all of these edges are really gonna matter. Anything that overlaps with the background, we wanna get kind of picky about as we're refining it today. And remember, you can always add and subtract from your selections. So here I'm just using the, the freehand lasso tool, and I just make just as many mistakes. So I think the magnetic one is a better bet for me.